director's testimony today mostly focused on Russia and his behavior during the election, but it was not the only topic. Director Comey also referenced the FBI's investigation of two physicians accused of illegally performing female genital mutilation on young girls in Detroit. This past week, for the first time since Congress passed a statute making it a crime in the United States to engage in female genital mutilation, to mutilate little girls, it's been a felony in the United States since 1996, we made the first case last week against doctors in Michigan for doing this terrifying thing to young girls all across the country with our partners in the Department of Homeland Security. We brought a case against two doctors for doing this to children. Kwambai Amadou chose to undergo what she calls female circumcision as an adult. She's also an anthropologist and in effect defends the practice of FGM saying Western society is wrong to view it as inherently impressive. Dr. Amadou joins us tonight. Dr. Amadou, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Tucker. So I'll concede the subject makes me so uncomfortable mm -hmm. that I, I, I don't like to do segments on it. Right. But I also think it's really important because I think it's so horrifying mm -hmm. that something like this is perpetrated on young girls as the mm -hmm. father of young girls. Right. Um, so it's, you seem like a reasonable person and a well-educated person. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me that anyone could defend this. Okay. On what grounds would you defend it? So when you opened just now, you said that I defend FGM. Yes. And I don't defend FGM. I don't defend Good. mutilation. I would never defend the mutilation of anyone. Um, I don't uh, identify with the term FGM, with the term mutilation. Right. I don't know anybody in my family who does or my community. And from over 25 years of research I've done on the field, I would say the um, great majority of women who are affected by what I call female circumcision practices do not see themselves as mutilated. So I think we need to start interrogating how we use that terminology. Okay. Um, I almost don't want to specify what it refers to because it's upsetting. I think we should. But it's the removal of a kind of key female sex organ right. in a lot of cases on and this is being done to girls mm -hmm. who obviously can't give consent okay. and it affects them for life that so, would be my perspective right so Tucker this is why I think we do need to have a discussion on what it is because when we use the term female genital mutilation automatically a certain uh, image comes to mind an image that's really been put out there for over 30 40 years in the media in the mainstream media and obviously um, through activist uh, um, efforts and, and women's groups it's the idea of the most horrific type of procedure which is type 3 WHO classifies this as type 3 infibulation that involves the suturing and sewing up of the labia majora this is a very rare procedure that is confined basically to a specific part of sub-Saharan Africa, the Horn of Africa. It makes, le makes up less than 10% of the entire prevalence of the procedures in, in sub-Saharan Africa and across um, various parts of the world. We need to understand that over 90% of what we call female circumcision involves what WHO classifies as types 1. Right. And that's divided into types 1A and B, and types 2, A and B as well. So, um, for instance, the Dawa Dibora case that has become quite uh, talked about in recent uh, weeks with the arrest of the, the doctor, the female doctor, Dr. Nar Gawala, I believe, in Michigan, their community, their Shiite Muslim, you know, quiet community here in the United States, their community performs... Um, they, first of all, they perform circumcision on boys. We'll get to that in a moment. And they perform, perform type 1A circumcision, which is a nick, a nick right. of the, the, the prepuce, the foreskin of the clitoris. Right. That is not actually what is illegal as far as I understand. What I understand is the removal of an entire portion of the female sex organ without the consent of the child. Now you underwent this as an adult. There's a quantum difference between making a decision to do something mm -hmm. like that and having that decision made for you mm -hmm. that cannot be reversed as a child. That seems to me probably the worst thing you could do a child. Okay, so back to the, um, the case of the, the, the Dawadi Bora doctor who's now right? in prison waiting trial. Um, she is accused, she's charged of F, with FGM, mutilating right. two seven-year-old girls. She performed NICS, NICS, type 1A, 
to the uh, the clitoral yeah, I don't, foreskin. I don't, I don't know that. But I it's don't really know that important that's, I don't know because that what's true. happened is it is true, and what's happened is that the it's it's the activists that have actually made this. You know, the the term female genital mutilation has they've conflated it. With okay. all these different but practices. some of those activists are victims of the practice itself, well, and we've interviewed them on this set, and they have said this has affected but, uh, my life and my happiness and my ability to experience happiness in a profound way, and it's totally barbaric. And I guess I just don't buy the, hey, it's a different culture. Well, so is throwing widows on the pyre, and absolutely. it's still wrong. And I absolutely agree with you, Tucker, but there's one thing I want to correct. You said it removes a vital part of the female genital anatomy, all right? And is it okay if I actually say what that part is? Because there's a misconception about what actually, you know, what these surgeries entail. There is no female circumcision procedure that removes the clitoris of a woman. It is absolutely impossible to remove a woman's clitoris without killing her. What is exposed is a tiny fraction of what is actually an extensive organ. That, okay. that is, that okay. is I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there and just before we get too and into I, it, right, let me just, let me, okay. let me just say, mm -hmm. would you concede, because there are a lot of women who feel mutilated by this, mm -hmm. this is not, you know, this is being led by women. Sure. Uh -huh that maybe we should let adults make this decision and not impose it on six-year-olds. Is that fair? Well, here's what I think about it. There are a lot of men, right, who have experienced male circumcision, who say that this is mutilation. In fact, in the courtroom, when Dr. Nargawala appeared in court, there were protesters outside. But they weren't anti FDM. But that's not protesters. an argument for female circumcision. No, what I'm saying is, you're, you're, you're saying to me that there are opponents to female circumcision. Look, as you know, there's a lot mutilated. of research. I don't want to get into the circumcision debate on mm -hmm. men, but there's, but re there's research. Okay, well, then there's research that shows there, there are profound and medical advantages in that. There's no research that shows there's any medical advantage to female First of all, that research, research is contested. Um, there is, there's a lot of research out there that says, yes, there is harm. There is risk. Look, there are over I, I, I 100, don't, deaths, we, th that's a 100 show. deaths each year from that's male circumcision. That's a separate show, and I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded. But show. what you're doing because is not we're making... Saying, you're saying we're abusing girls. Yeah, but that's like saying, and, and you know, you we can't ban weed because beer is legal. No, but it's listen, you are, you are accepting that it is okay to perform a much more intensive or invasive procedure on boys. I that I'm accepting that. I'm just saying that this is bad to do to little girls. I think if we accept it in American society that we do remove or we can we do remove the foreskin on boys we okay. do practice genital cutting here in the US on boys then it should not be impossible to understand that there are cultures there are societies that practice what uh, certain people are now calling gender. I just, I just don't want surgery. it in my culture, in my society. I guess that's but kind of what so it comes okay down to. It's okay to cut boys no, in I'm your not society? Saying, look, I'm just saying I don't want this, because I think it's awful. Well, we don't, in, in our culture, we don't discriminate. We don't, we have gender egalitarian <laughs> okay. surgeries. We do not discriminate. <laughs> yeah. We okay. don't discriminate. We're out, out of time. I feel like we can finish the hour. I'd, I'd probably die of embarrassment by then, but thank you uh, very much You're for welcome. coming out with that perspective. <laughs>